movie love Impossible Anything Comes to one All Forever High above The kind of feeling of Letting go and go Free fall and living on top of The world Blue skies and night swims Never keeping track of time Silent skin driving women what's going on look I did it right this week I didn't um, I didn't hit the button to play the music again see I'm getting better every week <laughs> so hey to you successful women hey to the YouTube watchers and hi to everybody watching the replay I'll say that right in the beginning I'm so glad that you came and that you're investing in yourself you're watching a free training what's better than free right we got some good stuff lined up for you today but First, say hello to my girl Paige, who is waiting in the comments with an Amazon gift card for a lucky active listener. So let her know that you are here and maybe you will win. Okay. So today we welcome Marion Richardson for the second time. Marion is the copywriter for busy solopreneurs. Her passion is helping solopreneurs like you write meaningful content that resonates with your brand in your dream clients. So she's bringing us today a training called copywriting versus content writing and how to use each to grow your business. So let me bring her on. Hello. Hey, Hello. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I will give you the floor and I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So as uh, Katie said, I'm a copywriter for solopreneurs. Uh, one of the biggest things I see is people sometimes not know the difference between copywriting and content writing. So we're going to talk about that today. So copywriting, in essence, is selling. It's marketing. So it's words that are meant to push your readers to a sale, right? And content marketing is actually more engagement focused, more building a community. So when you think about copywriting, think about sales, right? Think about selling your offer. When you think about content writing, think about growing your community and getting them primed for future sales by laying the groundwork of knowing you and your business. So when you think about how to write both of these types of uh, copy or content, what kind of content can you write with copy or content writing? So with copywriting, it's usually a short form copy. So think like ads, uh, even billboards, uh, social media campaigns. And the reason why short form copy works best for selling something is because it gets right to the point. It's short, sweet to the point. Um, I like to say it also creates a sense of urgency. So when somebody's reading your short form copy, they get the point. They know, OK, yeah, I need this right now. Right. It's like a little bit of FOMO uh, for content writing, though. That's more long form copy. So we're talking blog posts, email funnels, press releases. And that's the kind of copy you want to write when you want to uh, grow your community. So when you think about content writing, it's more about building no like trust with your audience. 
to give them time to get to know you and why they want to work with you versus copywriting. It's more like straight to the point, right? So, but keep in mind, uh, copywriting and content writing do have the same goals. So you might think like, well, if one is selling and one is engagement, how are they the same things? Well, both copywriting and content writing take SEO and uh, sales pretty seriously. It's just how they approach them is a different way. So one approaches it more rapidly and the other approaches it more gradually, right? So when it comes to uh, what kind of business goals you have and how to grow your business with either copywriting or content writing. So you want to talk about what do you want your content to do for you? Do you want to get sales? Do you want to grow your community? Do you want to get more leads? That's how you can tell which type of writing you want to gravitate to. So if you're looking for quality leads and conversions, you're going to want to write copy. Now, say you have like a new product you want to launch or you're about to uh, gear up to a certain revenue goal. You're going to want to write copy because it performs best when you have your messaging down, uh, your dream client profile down. And I mentioned that because you want to know, like, what do your people need? What's going to make them want to click the yes, I need that right now. So your copy should have that entail to it so that when you're writing it, your people get the idea that I need this right now. Right. And if you want to do a different type of, of business goal, say you want to have more consistent engagement on your posts, you want to have more uh, relatability with your uh, audience, you're going to want to write content. And so when you're writing content, the biggest goal is to grow your community and your brand visibility. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the background work like copywriting, having your brand messaging down, having your dream client profile down. But you also want to have more brand form uh, content included. So what I mean by that is having your content calendar uh, written out so that you have uh, a consistent upload. Because usually when you're writing long form copy like blog posts or emails, people expect to hear from you like at a certain time of week or the month. So it's good to have that already uh, ahead of time when you're writing your content. So when it comes to also growing your business for uh, either copy or content writing, you're going to want to keep in mind certain metrics and you can track your metrics either through the platform that you're using, like Instagram, or I guess it's called a meta business suite or your website like WordPress or Squarespace. So the metrics you want to track when looking uh, at copy, because like I said, copy is sales focused. It's trying to get you more revenue. Right. So if you want to do that for your copywriting to make sure the words you're writing are actually getting the sales you want. You're going to want to look at, um, oh, I think I'm in the wrong place here. Let me scroll back up. <laughs> okay. You're going to want to look at your click-through rate. So click-through rate shows you how many people actually clicked on your uh, link within your copy. And you're also going to want to look at your bounce rate to see how many people actually stayed on that page to view the copy of your offer. And that's why I like to suggest that you hire the same copywriter to write both your ad or your uh, sales funnel as well as your sales page copy so that all the copy flows consistently and whatever pulled them in in the first place helps them stay, right? And sales, obviously, you want to track your metrics of sales to see if the copy actually did increase your sales. Um, with content, some of the metrics you want to keep in mind for growing your audience would be organic and social media traffic and engagement. So seeing how many people found you through Google search or social media search, and if they're liking, sharing, and you know, subscribing, and commenting, and all that. Um, you also want to look at your average time on page, similar to a bounce rate, where you're just seeing if they're actually hanging out on your page and reading the content that you wrote. And it helps you to get an idea of if they're enjoying that content, if they like the longer form. You know, it gives you an idea that they are actually uh, engaging with your content. And uh, the last metric would be the generated leads metric. So to see if your content is actually bringing in qualified leads to your offer, because even though it's not going to always be a direct pitch like copy, say like you write a blog post and you have like a link at the bottom and it takes them to like an opt-in email form, you want to be able to see like how many people actually clicked on that through your blog post. So those are some cool metrics you keep in mind if you want to use your content or copywriting to build your uh, business. So uh, with both of these kind of writings, you want to make sure you have the uh, copywriting strategy on deck so that you can write with ease. And I mentioned this because whenever you're going into writing any kind of copy, whether it be content or otherwise, you need to know your messaging, 
You need to know your brand voice and you need to know your dream client profile so that you're able to write content that actually resonates with your readers. So uh, with that in mind, I actually do have a free copywriting guide to help you get all those uh, things planned out in advance so that you can write your copy easier and actually see results with it quicker. So that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you learned something. Hope you take that and write some cool content. Yeah, I definitely learned something. I just thought, and I think Paige said the same thing in the comments. I'm like, I just thought everything was copywriting. And you're like, no, it's different. This content writing copy. I'm like, okay, I had no idea. <laughs> so I did learn that. And then also the interesting thing about getting the same copywriter for your sales page as for some of your content and stuff so that it it all is in the same like flow and the same, that's like, I never, like I just, I, I haven't looked into copywriting that much that I knew that much. So that is like really, really good information that I needed to know. <laughs> so that's good to know. Thank awesome. you so much. I appreciate this so much. You're welcome. You did a really good job. And then your, um, your freebie link is in the description of the video. Yeah. So make sure everybody checks that out because who doesn't love free, right? Thank you right. so much for coming for the second time. You just add more and more value every time you come. So I appreciate you. And Marion's going to hang out in the comments if we have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys, that was good. I love having Marion on. Marion is like the nicest person in the world too. So yeah, chat with her in the comments. I swear <laughs> she's so nice. All right, amazing. So thank you so much to Marion. So now we're going to talk a little more about content, right? If, if, if creating content, if it feels like a struggle, <clears throat> like Marion would be the one with actually what to say in the content. But I'm going to talk to you about like, if, if content feels like a struggle, like creating content feels like a struggle, especially when it comes to like thinking of ideas that are valuable for your audience, right? But also that like those ideas and, and, and those things that will convert into leads and sales, right? If you're interested in that, this training right here is for you. And pop any questions that you have in the comments and I'll come through after this and I'll answer them, okay? Because I'm sharing one of my favorite ways to come up with endless content ideas for social media. <clears throat> So this will work for Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. It can be applied to any type of post, any type of niche, okay? So if we haven't met before, if you're new here, my name's Katie Fairhurst. I'm the admin of Successful Women Building Generational Wealth and the CEO of Fairhurst Freedom. I help social sellers create brag-worthy businesses using profitable habits and evergreen marketing strategies. So you can create consistent revenue without stress and without overwhelm, right? Isn't that what we wanna do? Isn't that why we're here, right? So if you're brand new to checking us out on the YouTube channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button because we put out great new live videos just like this one every single week and I don't want you to miss the next free training okay so these days being an online entrepreneur it also means being a content creator right even if creating content isn't something that you particularly enjoy or if you just don't feel like you're good at it I got asked the other day, how do you come up with so many content ideas for social media right somebody else said I'm still so slow at creating content. It takes me forever. What am I doing wrong, right? So the strategy that I'm sharing with you today, it will help with both of these issues, okay? <clears throat> and I also wanna share one other secret with you about creating content as well, okay? Creating content is like working out a muscle, all right? The more you do it, the stronger that muscle gets, the easier it becomes to come up with ideas, right? And to actually create the content. But like working out, it takes consistent effort to start getting stronger, okay? You can't go to the gym once a month, right? And expect to see measurable improvements, all right? So where most entrepreneurs go wrong is that they struggle to make the content in the beginning, right? Because it's difficult. Right. And because it, it's slow in the beginning and it takes you a long time. Right. So coming up with ideas that are that are hard. Right. That's what they're doing. Instead of leaning into that struggle and seeing it as an opportunity to grow and get better. 
and get stronger, just like if you were going to the gym, okay? So they pull back from it, right? And that is the exact thing that is keeping you stuck, right? When you pull back and you don't continue to build that muscle, okay? So yes, try this strategy, right? Try this, what I'm going to share with you today, but don't expect it to feel easy the first time you do it. Don't expect to get it perfect the first time and don't expect to do it quickly, right? Instead, decide right now that this is something that you're going to master, right? Decide that this is something that you're willing to be bad at until you get good at it, all right? The first time I created a reel for Instagram, it took me like I don't know, like an hour to record one, right? But now I could batch 10 reels in an hour if I wanted to, all right? And it didn't happen because I like suddenly learned some hack or, or some secret editing tip or something like that that makes it easy, right? That's not why. It happened because, because I was determined, right? Because I'm stubborn. But I was determined to keep going until it got easier, okay? So number one is always know your niche, right? I hammer this down to you all the time. But that's because if you don't know who you help and how you help them, you will always struggle to come up with content that resonates for your ideal clients, okay? I grew my following from like basically zero to over 8,000 engaged followers on combined accounts. And it's generated thousands of dollars in sales because I know my niche. And I was creating content that I knew would attract, capture, and convert my ideal clients, okay? You don't need a huge following to make a huge income, but you do need the right following. I have lots of videos about this on my YouTube channel, and I help you get super clear on this in the rejection free sales system as well. I'll link a five minute video below this in the description so you can kind of see exactly what I mean about that. Okay. So, step number two, two is once you're super clear on your niche, right? The next step is to come up with five value pillars that you can regularly talk about that relate to your niche. Okay. I help social sellers create a profitable social media presence. So my pillars are growing a following, capturing leads, nurturing trust, converting sales, and then entrepreneur mindset. If your niche is like helping new moms lose baby weight without living at the gym, your pillars might be exercises, supplements, diet, healthy habits, and of course, always mindset, right? Think of these five as five areas where you can educate, you can inspire, you can give value to your niche, right? As it you want it to relate back to your niche and what you sell. So what categories can we talk about on a regular interest that will benefit your ideal clients, okay? Another example might be, let's say you're an online dating coach and you help women navigate this crazy world of online dating that we're living in today. <clears throat> Your pillars could be choosing a dating platform, meaning like all the different ones that you have to choose from, right? Creating the profile there, communication tips, first date ideas, and always mindset, right? And don't feel like you, you're, you're going to fall into the trap of, of, of feeling like your, your pillars have to be perfect before you can start posting, okay? My pillars have changed several times and yours will too, so that's okay. The only way to find out if your pillar is really resonating with your audience is to start using it, start posting, see how people react, right? After 30 days of posting consistently, you will start to identify which pillars are really resonating with your audience and then which ones are kind of falling flat. Then you can kind of ditch the ones that like aren't resonating and then replace them with a new idea. And over time, you're going to have five high quality content pillars that your audience really loves and really responds to. <clears throat> okay. Now, once you have your five pillars, go into each one and think of five topics within each pillar that you can talk about on a regular basis. So going back to my example and looking at my attract pillar, I can talk about Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, right? Under each of these pillars, there's a strategy or there's a platform that I use to attract an audience. So it's easy for me to talk about these things when it comes to growing an audience because they're things I'm using on a regular basis, okay? So let's go back to that idea of helping the new moms lose weight example, right? 
and we'll dive into the workout pillar. You could do leg workouts, cardio, upper body workouts, abs, right? For that dating coach, you could do um, like um, the platforms. You could do Bumble, Tinder, Hinge, Match.com, right? And then you're going to continue this process for each of your five pillars until you have four categories. I would just keep it to four to keep it easy for yourself under each one. Now it's time to take these pillars and topics and transform them into over a hundred content ideas for your business, okay? So back to my example of the attract pillar, right? Let's talk about specifically Instagram. And what are five posts that I could create as it relates to using Instagram to grow your audience? I could create a post about um, setting up your bio, um, creating posts for your feed, creating reels, engagement strategies, and hashtag strategies, okay? For helping the moms lose the baby weight, how about under the ab workout topic? I could create a post about crunches, crunch exercises, three ways to do a plank, choosing ab equipment, mistakes to avoid when doing ab workouts, right? For the dating coach, um, under match.com. We could talk about why match.com might be the best platform for you, setting up your account, how to find matches, the benefits of using the paid version versus the free version. I'm totally making this up, right? <laughs> but my husband and I actually met on match.com way back in 2007 when internet dating was like a weird creepy thing, right? <laughs> it's not like it was now. And But these are things that I would have wanted to know when I first started using that platform, right? So if you create five post ideas under each topic, under each pillar, you'll have a hundred post ideas you could use for any platform. But here's the best part. You can also repurpose each content ideas and use it in multiple ways, okay? So if you're using Instagram to grow your business, you could create a carousel sharing three ways to do a plank. Then create a reel where you actually demonstrate the three ways to do a plank. Create a feed post with a photo of yourself doing a plank and share like the three examples in the caption, okay? With just these content types, you have now taken your 100 post ideas and turn them into 300 post ideas. That's almost a year's worth of posts already planned out for you in two seconds, right? A lot of people really struggle to come up with content ideas on social because they're afraid to repeat themselves. But the thing is, only 1% to 2% of your followers will actually see and engage with any given post. Okay, that's just how the algorithm works. And if your following is always growing, which it should be, your new followers completely miss the content you post last week or last month or last year. All right, you get the picture. So, and plus we all have our favorite ways that we like to consume content. Like some people really like to watch reels and some people really like to read those longer captions. And other people just like to swipe through a carousel and, and see the visuals and then maybe they'll save them for later, okay? So I highly encourage you to repurpose your best content and publish it in multiple ways, okay? If you're not doing this, you are really just like creating more work for yourself. And let's be honest, social media is already hard enough. So let's not do that, okay? If you want to see the exact content pillar structure I give to the students in the rejection-free sales system, I have it posted in the video description um, above or below, depending on which platform you're watching this on. So after you grab that for free, you will also be introduced to the posting schedule, the exact posting schedule that I follow for Facebook and for Instagram and for the stories as well. Okay, so inside I break down the three types of posts you must be using if you want to grow your following, capture leads, and convert sales on any kind of platform, okay? I also give you a sample schedule so you can follow that for each platform. And you can increase your following and you can increase your sales with just one post per day. If you want something even better than that, because I know you, I, you know, you know that I like to let you, that I want you to level up, right? If you're a member of this Facebook group, inside the annual VIP membership, I post a monthly posting plan with examples in the VIP membership lounge every single month, okay? 
November was just posted. So imagine waking up each morning with a streamlined action plan with everything that you need and nothing that you don't to move the needle in your business every single day. You can finally step off that content creation hamster wheel and trade posting and praying for a strategy that you create with the help of a successful marketer. Saying goodbye to prospecting for good because your authentic engagement and content strategies are flooding your inbox with leads and sales and signups every single day, okay? You're connecting and you're working alongside other ambitious women as you network, you share wins, you tackle your daily to-dos together, right? And you're tapping into the genius of some of the top personal branding and marketing experts on the planet. And you can track your activity and create profitable habits that put you on a winning streak, all right? You're going to turn consistency into a fun game instead of just this overbearing chore, okay? So I put this link in the description as well. Please ask me any questions in the feed here, or you can send me a private message if you're not comfortable with putting your questions in there, okay? That is it for today, guys. Thank you again to Marion Richardson for um, coming on and giving us those copy tips. Grab her free offer as well. Her offer's in the description. Congratulations to the Amazon gift card winner. Make sure you email me to get your gift card. And you guys have an amazing rest of your week.